Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be installing the Raspberry Pi head unit using Open Android Pro onto our car. So let's get started. I for one been super excited about this. I've been wanting to do this as soon as I got all the parts, but I had to film everything. So this actually took a course of a week and a half just to put everything together and film everything. So everything that I talk about or everything I show in the video will be listed down in the description below. That's including the scripts and everything that I'm running. I also want to give a huge shout out to 52Pi. They're the one that actually sent me the low profile fan that I'm actually using on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll leave a link to that as well. Hopefully this thing is strong enough to keep everything cool on the Raspberry Pi. Now, before I jump into it, a word from my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you wanna be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using it for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime. I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs. If I don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my ISP to know what I'm doing, I wouldn't want them to know either. So they have no logs whatsoever. It also allows for P2P. And if you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. My main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so I could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the States. But yeah, you could do that with this as well. And best of all, if you're using the link down in the description below, you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose now keep in mind like i said i've been filming this for the past week and a half so i might be repeating myself on certain things just because i filmed it on different times and don't remember what i said but be sure to watch through the entire video because i actually have a couple of revisions that i found out as i was building it so you will see that throughout the course of this video now i also will be making update videos on this build because i do want to add more stuff to it also i'm starting a car channel on my other channel nova spirit tv i will be doing a couple of projects over there which is mostly right now cleaning up that car so it's going to be detailing videos buffing videos painting videos stuff like that so i'm going to get that up and going maybe it'll evolve into putting parts on the car because there are some stuff i do need to fix like hub bearings i do want to swap out the rims uh, i have an exhaust leak that i want to fix so i might add that in there as well and completely transform that into a car channel because i i enjoy doing that work myself it's just I didn't know if uh, a tech channel would work with that. So yeah, all my car videos will start going into that channel. So I'll leave a link down in the description below for that as well. So uh, let's begin. So guys, this is where I have it at so far. And I didn't want to record something when I get too far along, but this is what it's at. Um, this is so far still printed in PLA. It is a sample that I've been working on. So it's still at its state. But how I have it hooked up right now is the Raspberry Pi goes on top. Then you have the relay boards, the two relay boards. So one relay controls the on and off for the Raspberry Pi. Second relay, I'm gonna program that to be the illumination. So when I turn on my headlights, it will actually dim the screen. Then I have the USB for the sound card, the USB sound card. And then I also have this custom made wire, which is a normal three and a half inch jack that will actually plug directly into the amp that is underneath. So I also have the Bluetooth and this is to power on the screen. So when the Raspberry Pi comes on, it will actually power on the screen. So turning it this around, 
it will actually reveal the amp itself and it has three inputs which I will be wiring from the car. Uh, the middle one is power, 12 volts, then you have ground, then you have the accessory. Uh, accessory is needed so the amp will actually power on and this does work with speakers. I have tested them out already. So um, the custom wire that I made is this little loom. So it's a three plug-in that goes in here, then it goes into a three and a half millimeter jack. And I have a bunch of these. These are actually 12 volt quick chargers for cars. And you can buy a pack of these, uh, four of them for like $8. And what it's gonna do is one is actually gonna power the Raspberry Pi with continuous 12 volt. So this will actually be hooked up to the 12 volts here. Uh, the 12 volt and the ground. And then I have a second one that will be powered by the accessory. So the one that's powered by the accessory, the second one, will actually be able to power the actual screen in case I need a secondary source of this, which so far I don't because the Raspberry Pi can power the screen just perfectly fine, but I don't know in the future. And then it will also power the five volt relay that I have on the opposite side. So this requires a 12, uh, five volt input. Uh, what it really does is that it actually just uh, acts as a button. Like in order to power on the Raspberry Pi, all you really need is to short GPIO 3 and, GP, uh, and ground, or GPIO 5 and ground, those two. Once you short those two, it'll actually power on the Raspberry Pi. And this is only relative to the Raspberry Pi 4 and above. So what I have done is anytime the ignition switch gets turned on, the relay gets flipped, connects the two wires like I'm shorting them out, and then it'll power on the Raspberry Pi. The good thing about this is that the Raspberry Pi will always stay powered on, and then when you shut it down, it still has power going to it, so you don't lose the real-time clock. And also, uh, the way I'm doing it is, if I have this connected, say the, uh, the relay is shorted, I have a little script on the Raspberry Pi, when it detects it's unshorted, so the accessory is turned off like the key is turned off, and it's unshorted, it'll actually shut down the Raspberry Pi. So, it acts as an on and off switch for the entire assembly. And that's how I have this hole hooked up. Now, I'm still super excited to get this in. I'm just pre-recording this ahead of time, because I know I'm just going to start installing this and not have footage that I want. But yes, uh, I also want to thank Pi52 for, or 52Pi for sending this fan over to me. This is from Geek Pi, well, something that they carry. You know how they have the ice tower? Something like that, that's their ice tower. Uh, they also sent me this one that will perfectly fit here. And this is a specific one that I wanted is because two screws will be installed to mount this into the base. And then there's two screws that are empty, which will allow me to fit this fan on. Because most cases when you see fans, they usually use the four screws. And it's gonna be a little bit annoying to mount this whole thing. But yeah, this is how I have it set up. This is the Subaru factory um, hoster for the radio itself. And the distance between the holes are 40 millimeters or 20, 20, 20. So 20 from here, then 20 from here, if you want to use these two holes instead. But 40 by 40, and this is most factory. So if you're gonna do this on your own car, these are 40 millimeters apart. And they are M4 screws, uh, 4.2 millimeter threads. So, and then this whole width is 178 or 176, uh, the width of this. The distance I have is set up to 120 millimeters, which gives me a little bit of a gap when I install the monitor assembly itself where the wire could go in. And it'll perfectly press up against the housing. So when I push this in, even though the monitor will be actually mounted onto the housing itself, it won't fall back if I push the buttons because it'll be pressed up against here. Then I have foam that I'm going to install here so when I do press the monitor against the back plate it won't damage anything. Now I went through a, a bunch of revisions. Originally what I wanted to do was actually grind down the bottom of this. I was planning to grind down the bottom of this one millimeter because we know that this is 99 millimeters and this screen is exactly 100 so it would never fit. Then after playing with a couple of designs, um, I decided to keep it at an angle, which I'll show you a picture right over here because I can't do it while I'm holding it up. But yeah, I went through five different revisions or four different revisions. Then I finally printed this out in uh, ABS. So these are all PLA, it's easier to print. It doesn't smell when I'm printing it. So I'm okay to keep reprinting these as much as I want just to see what I need. And then on the final version, this is ABS. I will paint this to be black, but ABS will survive the heat. So that's what I need to do. Uh, this plate is still PLA. I will be reprinting this to ABS. 
and once I have all the fitment correct. So right now I was just testing all the holes, all the fitment, the Raspberry Pi. You can find all this information online, all the hole spaces and everything. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be uploading the desi these designs. If you guys are interested, I probably will throw it up onto Thingiverse, but this is very, very specific to the WRX uh, 2005 model. So. Uh, you really can't use maybe the tray you could probably use the tray on different models because that's standard uh 176 width and, and the screw holes for the radios are pretty much standard so i could maybe just uh load this uh frame up if you guys are interested in doing the same setup that i have but ultimately yeah this came out pretty good oh on a side note i did notice this could be bought much cheaper on ebay so I found this on Amazon for about $26. You could probably buy the same thing on eBay for a lot less and it's coming from China. So it will take a lot longer to get to you, but you could get this for, I think I saw this for $15 instead of $26. Anyway, I will be buttoning up everything. I will have all the scripts and everything that I use for the shutdown and power on on my GitHub. So I'll leave a link on, that dis uh, on the description down below. But yeah, I just wanted to get this out of the way. Uh, so I could start putting this all together, install it into a car, and then have an actual test with the OB OBD and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, um, let me get on with that. All right guys, so here we have it. Uh, this is basically 99% done. I still need to do this frame, but pretty much I'm gonna explain how I set this up. So I went through a couple of revisions just building this because I have to build my own auto start and shutdown switch, which is ran off now by two relays instead of one. So original thought is that the Raspberry Pi uh, on the latest firmware, Raspberry Pi 4, with the September 2020 firmware, you are able to actually short out GPIO3 and it'll actually power on and also shut down the device, which worked great. I actually tested this and I was like, oh, okay, I could use this off by one relay system, get this whole thing up and running. But the problem was that actually didn't shut down the Raspberry Pi and it was doing a 300 milliamp draw which was a problem because that will actually drain the battery really, really quick. So I actually modified the firmware and changed it so it will actually shut down completely when I do do a system halt or shut down the system. And that resulted in only about 40 milliamp draw, which is a little bit less than actually a regular radio on a car. Uh, a car radio is about 50, amp, 50 milliamp draw, and this is doing about 40. So huge improvement there, but the only problem was you could no longer use the GPIO3 to short out the system. So the only way to power back on was to short out global enable or global EN, which is in the center of the board. This required me to use a second relay. So by shorting that out, you can't keep it short out. You have to actually just uh, like, like, it's like a switch. You flip it once and then it'll turn it on and then you got to disable. you can't keep it shorted. So that's what the second relay is for. Then after programming a little bit of stuff, I ended up using an ESP. Uh, to run that uh, program. So the ESP will actually click the relay on for like a second to power on the Pi and keep this enabled. And when the car turns off, this will be disabled and then the Pi will shut down. And as far as the amp hookup, I have it underneath this board, as you can see down there. I actually have uh, power, ground, and then accessory power on the right side. Right there, the yellow wire, then the red, and then the black. The amp only turns on when the accessory is in. So if you have the 12 volt battery in, it doesn't turn on until the accessory is triggered. And then on the back of that, you have your speaker output. But ultimately, this is a pretty base setup because I don't have much installed yet, like reverse cameras or radio FM input or anything like that. I'm just trying to get this base and then I'll upgrade from then. Now, one thing I did notice when I was playing around with this is that uh, this whole board, as you can see, it gets hot, especially the uh, quick charger board. So I ended up putting a heat sink on here just to help um, shift the heat around so it doesn't melt the board or actually melt through the plastic. So I'm hopeful, hoping that that's enough. But if not, I have bought, like I said, a bunch of these so I could actually replace it and uh, you know change the model if I need to. But this is the standard setup that I have right now. Now I will be putting this board online because technically this board, the bottom one, the red one that you see, is universal. The, 
the holes and everything are uh, standard for most radios. The width of this is standard for most radios and I have holes dedicated just to install certain things. So you can move the Raspberry Pi around, you could move these boards around and you can see this one's hot glued and that one's hot glued for now just to get it in place. For testing wise, right now you can see the relays are off because this is powered by accessory and once this accessory kicks in, it will turn on the ESP ESP will trigger out the relays to turn on and off the board and then this one is going to be on all the time because this one keeps the Raspberry Pi board uh, powered on. Now I don't know if you could see this but there's a red light over there that means the board is actually off okay and when I, I, I code it so when you turn on the Raspberry Pi this will actually turn off the LED so I know it's running. This way it is for my testing purposes so let me uh, place the camera kind of like this so you could see like what's going on with everything i'm gonna flip the switch which i have right here this is a little switch that i made so this is considered the accessory okay this will power on everything and once i flip the switch it's like turning the key on the car so there we have it i flipped the switch the relays are on you can see that that light is on now the screen's turning on and as long as I have this switch on the on position, it will keep the Raspberry Pi running and my Android Auto will kick in. Now, the boot up time takes about 30 so seconds or right around 30 seconds or so. Uh, I did read online where you could actually uh, use an SSD or maybe a USB 3 and you can trim it down to almost 10 seconds on boot up. So I might be doing that in the future, but for now I'm just gonna leave it on the SD card. So now that everything's booted up, you know what? My favorite part. I'm gonna peel this to see how well it's gonna look. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. And let me see if I can focus on that now. Let's see, okay. I'm not sure if you could see that, but the red light on the Raspberry Pi is completely off and it's staying running. I could do whatever I want with it. I could, uh, I don't know, go to dashboard, click on whatever and it should load, everything should be fine. Okay, let's turn off the car or turn off the key and I will flip the switch. As soon as I flip it, you can see it's shutting down, red light comes off, it comes on, and that's it. Basically now the Raspberry Pi is shut down. All right, so that is it for this whole setup. I still need to paint this trim. And I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself a couple of times, it's just because I've filmed this in the course of a week or a week and a half and I might have said some stuff before. I've done some revisions on this that might be different from when I first recorded it. So now that everything is all set, tested, I am ready to paint this trim and get this installed onto the car. Okay, so what I got going on over here is some uh, spray paint. This is actually for my car. Um, this is the same color code that I would have on my silver WRX. Some primer. Uh, and some black enamel paint. Now I'm using enamel instead of acrylic because enamels last a little bit longer under the heat. And then I got lacquer thinner. So basically what you want is one to one ratio. So this is uh, whatever this bottle is gonna fill up and then one to one and you want it as a milk consistency. So I'm gonna paint this frame in black and this is not, uh, this matte finish is what I wanted. I don't want anything that's glossy so it's gonna look similar to this. Maybe I'll clear it. And I got my little paint booth here. It's just a little BiQ box 3D printer. This box is a really, really nice box. Just taped up the corners. This way I have a little area to spray in. I might upgrade this later on and put some LEDs on top and probably a fan in the back for exhaust. But for now, it's gonna work.
All right, so everything is all set up now. Um, it is very clean. I also ran the mic up to the top. So this is where my lapel mic is. Uh, for now, that's where it's gonna stay until I could get it up to right over here. So I do have enough slack so I could run over here, but that requires removing a little bit of the headliner, popping this off, and I wanna 3D print something that will fit right here so I could put the mic right there. But for now, that's where it's gonna sit, uh, kinda just chilling over there. I could've clipped it onto the back of this, but I'm gonna leave it like that. No, it sounds pretty clear, no static or anything. Sounds pretty clear, no static or anything? Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thanks, honey, I love you. Bye. Bye. Um, the Android Auto, everything is working. As far as the audio, that's working as well. Uh, one thing I didn't include in the whole thing that I was showing you guys earlier was you need a ground loop isolator just to remove the noise. If you got engine noise, alternator noise, or whatever it is, you need a ground loop isolator. So I have a very old one that I popped in that I plan on replacing because the one that I got is, uh, is very bulky. It's for like TVs and stuff like that. So uh, to check this out, uh, I'm gonna go over to Android Auto. Hold on one second. Wi-Fi. All right, so there you go. Music works. Sounds pretty good. If I want to change the volume, I press that and kind of lower it. So let me mute that. Uh, touch screen, dual, zoom, everything. That works as well. Uh, audio is working. I don't have FM on this. Now, originally I did have an idea for FM uh, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, but yeah, I don't have FM on this or reverse camera yet, yet, hence the word. Everything does work. It works actually pretty well too. And it looks very, very clean. Like this whole thing is flush. The screen looks like it's it's actually tilted at like a two or three degree angle. But as a driver's standpoint, this actually looks really great. There's not much of a reflection. Uh, there is some reflection according to a camera. You could see definitely see a lot of reflection. But according to like how I'm sitting here and looking at it, I don't see much reflection. Uh, I could also control Android Auto, um, the music and everything through outside of the app. You see that? I could still listen to my music. Uh, I don't have my dash gauge working yet. The OBD2 connector that I had actually blew out my uh, OBD2 connection. So I need to find a fuse to get that fixed up. But for now, I don't have that. But this is how it would look like if I do have everything installed. Now I do want to change this to a huge boost gauge because my car is turbo, so I want to see that. And I want to see a few information that my cluster doesn't show, which is uh, load, definitely, throttle, air fuel ratio, if that's possible, oil temp, and also like the big boost gauge. That's probably mainly the things that I want. I've only had this installed for about a day or two, so I don't know the long-term uh, effects of this. Uh, it seems that the amp, when you're running it for a while, it does get a little bit warm on the heat sink. Uh, that's what I noticed. The fan that I have on the Raspberry Pi is using the Raspberry Pi's firmware to control the fan. So once it hits 60 degrees Celsius, it will kick in. So it hasn't been kicking in yet. And that's basically about it. Uh, I'm going to be playing around with this for a few days, uh, maybe a week or two. It is summertime over here. So I will be able to actually talk about the heat issues after a week. So I'm, I'm going to do a review video after this uh after our, like a month of usage in the summer and i probably will do more upgrades to this because uh over here on the center console right over here i do definitely want to put my quick chargers here so i will 3d print certain clips over here have it mounted i might want to put a volume knob right over here to control the volume because i don't like pressing the top right corner and uh, right now, the method that I have installed seems to retain time. So that's why I did it this way. So I don't have to use a battery and it doesn't draw that much battery itself. But anyway, uh, I will be doing update videos, more install videos. Once I get the reverse camera installed, I will be doing a video for that. If I get a FM installed, I will be doing a video for that. I have plenty of room in the back to run a USB hub. So I could start plugging in a ton of stuff. I might even do dash cam and have it constantly recording when the device is on. So I might even do that. I don't know yet, but I'll play around with that. And once I get the module for AutoBox, I might be able to test out CarPlay on this, uh, but I'm still waiting for that USB module that I need to plug into this. As I mentioned in the video before, uh, I have this. This was actually originally on my original car PC that I built a couple of years ago. Well now 10 years or 15 years ago. And this is a USB TV tuner and FM tuner. Unfortunately, this have no drivers for Linux and I couldn't get this up and going. So I will have to think of a new solution for the reverse camera as well as the FM receiver. Uh, there's that. Uh, a couple of other things I do want to do is uh, eventually add a USB hub to it 
add some more modules to this thing and get it working more than what it should be right now. Uh, again, I will be doing update videos on this uh, as far as more things I add to it in the future. This way you guys could keep on the progress and seeing uh, if there's anything else I could do. And if I missed anything in this video that you guys were interested about that I didn't even talk about, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.